Good morning. It is a joy to be back with you today. Let's start with our theme song today as we set the table together, Come to the Table of Grace. We will sing this through once to start with, and we will sing it as written, Come to the Table of Grace. When we sing it through later, we're going to change the words just a little bit. But please join with me in singing, Come to the Table of Grace. Will you please stand as you're able? Today we conclude our series, Come to the Table, on this day that we celebrate World Communion Sunday. Today we join with our Christian siblings around the globe as we celebrate the sacrament that reminds us of Jesus' life and ministry, his death and resurrection. There is great joy found at God's table, joy in the vibrant relationships that nurture and sustain us in community, joy in the sharing of our gifts joy in the journey as we work toward a more just and equitable world. As we sing together, we will proclaim joy. We're going to sing, come to the table of grace, but we're going to use the words, come to the table of hope our first time through and come to the table of joy our second time through. So let's sing, come to the table of hope, then come to the table of joy. Twice through. <laughs> Joy. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship as we take our place at the table. The words are in bold for the response in your bulletin or on the screen if you're worshiping from home. We hear God's calling to have joyful spirits as Christ followers. We open our hearts to be filled with abundant life. We know that sometimes it is difficult to be joyful we recognize that joy is a practice and discipline. We open ourselves to the joy that comes with justice. We make room at this table for joy in all its forms. I invite you to remain standing as we sing our opening song. It's number 89 in the red hymnal, number 89. And this is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. We'll sing all four verses, number 89. <laughs>
As you put your hymnals away, I invite you to turn to your neighbors and offer them signs of peace and joy this morning. As you are returning to your seats, I invite the children to come up and join me and Miss Caroline for a few minutes together. There you are, Caroline. Good morning. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Good. Hi, guys. Come on down. Oh, it's good to see you. That baby's getting almost too big. That's a heavy baby. <laughs> I don't know if it's a heavy baby or she's making it look heavy. Anyway, good morning, all of you. Well, my name's Caroline, and I'm here today to tell you a story, and we're going to talk about communion. But first, I want to share you something. This is my teddy bear. It's very old and very loved. And before COVID, I had a friend that would invite all of us over to her house, and she, we'd have a teddy bear picnic. And we would have tea, and we'd all bring our little teddy bears and talk about them. Well, during COVID, she said, wouldn't it be fun if we put our bears in the windows and let people know that the bears are watching? And everyone did that along the street that I live on and all over, in Homer, I think. My bear's kind of small, so I put him in the window anyway. And then one day, Huge Harold came and said, may I join you? May I join you? Hmm. Well, he's not, what is he? He's a stuffed toy, but what is he? A rabbit. a rabbit. He's not a, he's not a bear. He's not in that community of bears. So I had to take a little vote and I called my friend up as a joke and I just said, I want to put a rabbit in my window with my bear because the rabbit was lonely during COVID too because no one with any kids was visiting me. And this little huge Harold, that's what I call him, was getting a little lonely. Yeah, he's not that big, but that's his name, huge child. And so Blueberry Bear said, oh, yes, bring my friend. So, oops. So I had two of them sitting in my windowsill. And someone, some very clever person walking by, looked at me one time and said, called me up, I think. Yeah, called me up, maybe a text, and said, do you have a rabbit in your window? This is a bear thing. And I said, well, it's a community of stuffed animals showing everyone that we care during COVID when we can't get together. So I think my rabbit's welcome. And she listened and she said, you're right. It's a community and no one should be turned away. So after that, I saw elephants. I saw a stuffed giraffe. Oh, the, everyone had all kinds of animals that they put in their windows, not just bears. So if you think about the word community, there's a word in your church that we use. It's called communion. It's kind of close, isn't it? Community and communion. That's right. Communion is. Communion is. And it's made up. We are the community today of Homer in Homer. So the word communion means exactly what you just said, Emma. And that's a good definition. It's a special meal, too. Do you see how Pastor Lisa set up the table for us? She knew we were coming. She put some candles. She likes copper. It's got some fall colors. She's got the bread covered. Isn't that special? She took some time making that pretty for us. So that's because we are all welcome at this table today. Well, the tradition of having bread and drinking grape juice or wine started about 
can you believe it, 2,000 years ago in a city called Jerusalem, which is far from here. And that's when a man named Jesus had a community of friends, just like we do here. And as they were listening to him and they believed he was a good man, they believed, like he said, that everyone is a part of the community. Well, Jesus taught us that everyone should come to the table. Bears, rabbits, elephants, giraffes, doesn't matter. They're all welcome. Even people we don't get along with. And I don't know if bears and, I mean, bears and rabbits always get along, but my two do for sure. Jesus showed these things. He showed love. We sang a song today a little bit. We're thinking we're going to add love to it. Peace, my favorite word, and grace to everyone. And so all the things that we've been exploring this week are things that we can gather around the table that's been prepared for us. And whenever we serve communion, which is a very special meal, we have to remind ourselves that this is, that this is a place that everyone belongs. The littlest of you with a little tiny ponytail on top of her head, to the oldest of us, you guys are all welcome. And that is a reason to celebrate. Communion is a party that we've all been invited to. And it's a joyful celebration. So today, we're going to celebrate communion and we're going to be joyful. So take a one last look at that table and think how beautiful it is. See the candles, the flowers, the way that it's so artfully done. Think about what's underneath the napkin, do you know? Food, yes, food, exactly, because it's a table for love, for communion, food, and something to drink, too. I don't think we should be tossing our friends. Yeah, I don't think we should be tossing our friends, either. That's a good idea. So I'm going to, can you bow your head? Hold your toys quiet. Can you bow your head? And you say these words after me, okay? We come to the table. We come to the table. To share in God's feast. To share in God's feast. Everyone's welcome. We gather in peace. We gather in peace. This is God's table. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. It's not yours or mine. God's love is for everyone. God's love is for everyone. For now and all time. For now and all time. And you know what? Jesus wants you to go out and do good this week and have a wonderful, wonderful feeling of community wherever you go. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in our Song of Illumination, which is on the back of your insert of the song we just sang, Come to the Table of Grace. We will sing verse 1 as our prayer and song of illumination today. Let's sing this together. Remember, this is at, to the tune of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Good morning. Today we celebrate our common communion table with people all over the world. Through Jesus, we are brought together no matter how we got here. Believing that in the host of this table makes our joy complete. Let us share our stories, our compassion, our sympathy as part of one human family that shares the love of Christ and the breaking of the bread. 
Our first reading today is from Philippians 2, chapter, uh, 2 verses 1 through 13. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Church of Philippi. Philippi is located in northeastern Greece, in an area known as Macedonia. The city was already ancient by the time Paul arrived there around the year 49 Common Era. Paul was in prison, some think in Rome, when he wrote this letter. This is a paraphrase of the epistle, so please understand this is Paul talking. If you've gotten anything out of, at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling, humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship of, before this Christ and call out in praise to his master of all, to the glorious honor of God Almighty. What I'm getting at is that you should keep doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy working deep within you, willing and working at what will God give God the most pleasure. A little aside, um, when, I, when I saw this reading, I, I got online and I, uh, I, I googled Paul and Philippi. And I invite all of you to do the same because it's a very interesting history. Quite fascinating, actually. Our second reading is from Matthew 21, verses 23 through 32. Jesus was back in the temple teaching. The high priests and leaders of the people came up and demanded, show us your credentials. Who authorized you to teach here? Jesus responded, First, let me ask you a question. You answer my question, and I'll answer yours. About the baptism of John, who authorized it, heaven or humans? They were on the spot, and they knew it. They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, if we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. If we say humans, we're up against it with the people because they all hold John up to be a prophet. They decided to concede that round to Jesus. We don't know, they answered. Jesus said, then neither will I answer your question. Tell me what you think of this story. A man had two sons. He went up to the first and said, son, go out for the day and work in the vineyard. The son answered, I don't want to. Later on, he thought better of it and went. The father gave the same command to the second son. He answered, sure, glad to, but he never went. Which of the two sons did what the father asked? They said, the first. Jesus said, yes, and I tell you that crooks and outcasts are going to precede you into God's heaven, God's kingdom. John came to you showing you the right road. 
you turned up your noses at him, but the crooks and outcasts believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe him. Word of God, word of life. What does hope look like to you? At last week's Greater Northwest Cabinet Retreat, facilitated by Giovanni Arroyo of the General Commission on Religion and Race, we did a lot of team building and relationship building activities. Some of them were a ton of fun, including a rollicking game of charades where two of my superintendent colleagues, uh, male superintendent colleagues, had to mime being in labor. Uh, some of them were not so fun, like the terrifying suspension bridge over the river gorge that was part of our trust building. I don't know how much trust I have having to uh, get over my fear of heights that quickly, but I survived it. I made it to the other side. I made it home. I'm okay with that. <laughs> so Some of the activities were a lot of fun, and some of them were quite a challenge. But then one day, Giovanni instructed us to take a picture of hope. Take a picture of hope. Gio invited us to spend 30 minutes walking around the church where we were meeting and the surrounding area with our phones and to take a picture of hope. There were a few great things about this activity. First off, we were able to get out of the building. As wonderful as the hospitality was and as beautiful as the space was, I always find it really hard to sit in the same room for three days straight, especially when it's in a windowless basement. So I was grateful for the opportunity to get up and get outside and move around some. And also it was refreshing to be asked to take out our phones. In so many places in life, we're told to put away our phones, to silence them, to turn them off. But but this time we had a good excuse to be on our phones for a bit, which felt like it was a break from the work. A few of us decided to enjoy the beautiful sunshine and cool temperatures and explore a nearby neighborhood. It's fall in Bellingham, Washington, but not quite as far along as it is here. And so there were still amazing flowers and vegetables growing in people's gardens. The people in the neighborhood where we walked obviously were all avid gardeners and took advantage of every square inch of space, turning lawns into productive gardens and planting everywhere they could, even the narrow strips between the sidewalks and the curb. Cosmos and mums, sunflowers were vibrant, the zucchini were still growing, and I saw the largest cherry tomato bush I have ever seen growing in a barrel and spilling over the fence with hundreds of tomatoes on it in every stage of ripeness. We were admiring the lovely architecture of the craftsman style homes and the lush gardens when we came to a house that had a beautiful rock retaining wall. And on top of that retaining wall was a huge, thriving rosemary bush. One of my colleagues commented that she could never keep rosemary alive. And I said, I had the same problem. So we stood there chatting about rosemary and stroking the bush to get that beautiful scent on our hands when the front door opened and the owner came out. I'm sure she was curious why four strangers were standing in front of her sidewalk in the middle of a work day, petting her rosemary plant. <laughs> we smiled and waved to show that we weren't crazy and that we weren't casing the joint. We called out how beautiful her garden was, and she came towards us smiling. I told her how much I loved the grape arbor that was up by her house. Even from the sidewalk, I could see the huge bunches of purple grapes hanging from the vine. And then she said, come pick some. Here we were, four strangers on the sidewalk, and she invited us onto her property and into her life. We went up to the little patio where the grape arbor was, and we continued to exclaim over the bounty of her garden. There was a 10-foot-tall sunflower with a face that measured a foot across. And she said it was a volunteer, that it had fallen from her bird feeder and taken root. 
And she was going to let it sit there and go to seed, hoping that the seeds would drop and take root themselves so that she would have a whole yard full of these huge, comical, heavy-headed sunflowers. We stood there on the terrace amidst the grapes and the sunflowers, and she said, I'll be right back. And she disappeared into the house for a minute. And she came back out with a step ladder, two sets of pruning shears, and a handful of plastic bags and encouraged us to cut as many grapes as we liked. Well, I'm a trusting Alaskan, so I dove right in. I started clipping off these beautiful, bountiful bunches of grapes and popped some in my mouth right there. They were bursting with juice and flavor, warm from the fall sunshine. And the others hung back just a little bit, but once they tasted those grapes, they were all in. We all took turns selecting these luscious clusters and clipping them carefully and gently placing them into the bags. She noticed that we were all wearing name tags, something that we had forgotten, um, and asked, what are you all doing in town? So we told her that we all worked for the United Methodist Church and we were in town for a conference and we explained about the assignment to take a picture of hope. And she posed next to her sunflower in front of the grape arbor so that we could take her picture. Her friendliness and hospitality gave us all hope. She asked where home was for all of us, and we answered, Boise, Seattle, Homer, Alaska. And when she heard Alaska, her face lit up. She lived in Anchorage for 40 years and was a retired teacher. She had retired six years before and decided to move south where it was warm, which is why she ended up in Bellingham. We shared the names of the schools that we taught in and talked about the transient nature of students in Anchorage, especially in the schools near the military bases. And my colleagues stood there with their mouths hanging open. That of all the houses, in all the neighborhoods, in all the city of Bellingham, we ended up chatting with another Alaskan. We were late getting back to the church, <laughs> but we finally arrived beaming with sticky fingers, bags full of luscious grapes, and hearts full of hope. We passed the grapes around to our cabinet colleagues and shared the story as we all received the fruit of the vine together. They were the most delicious grapes I've ever had. They were sweet, they were juicy, they were sun-warmed, they were hope, they were joy. They were communion. Never has a snack felt so much like a sacrament as it did with our new friend Kay. Here in Homer, we have spent this last month exploring what it means to be people of the table. We've looked at what it means to come to the table of hospitality, of peace, of love, of grace, and today of joy. Being people of the table means that we continue to look for ways to add another seat, to invite another in, to build relationships, to make friends, to share a meal, a conversation, our very hearts. And being people of the table means that we share something in common with our Christian siblings the world over. Millions of Christians around the world, regardless of language, lifestyle, food, even understandings of the Christian faith itself, Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Protestants in all our diversity, when we come to this table, we eat together. This table unites us in our diversity. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, we all share one thing in common. When we come to this table, we are guests and Jesus is the host. When we come to this table with humility and with joyful thanksgiving, we are joined with our siblings on earth and in heaven who have come to the glorious feast. Communion is about union, connection, relationship. And that's what we pray for each time we share this sacred meal. At the end of the communion liturgy, we say, by your spirit, make us 
one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. We pray for the joyful reign of Christ using the image of a heavenly banquet where all are fed, all have enough, all are one, joined together by the love of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of God. A retired school teacher named Kay gave us grapes. But more than that, she gave us a taste of the kingdom of heaven. When you taste the sweetness of the grape juice today, may you think of our new friend Kay and the cabinet members who met her and of our dear departed saints and of your loved ones who have gone before and of all of our Christian siblings all over the world. May you feel united, connected, loved, hopeful, joyful. May you taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I invite you to stand for our song of response. It's verses 2 and 3 of As We Gather at the Table. Again, your bulletin inserts are on the screen if you're worshiping from home. Let us sing verses 2 and 3. May be seated. If you are worshiping with us at home today, I encourage you to gather your own communion elements, bread and juice, or something like them, as we join in communion together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Will you please bow with me? Almighty God, Father of grace, Mother of mercy, you have called us to one table, but we have pursued our own course. You have promised us the abundance of all creation, but in our greed and in our envy, the world goes without. You have promised us the bread of life itself, but in our pride and in our arrogance, the world goes hungry. You have promised us the waters of peace and justice, but in our violence and in our discord, the world goes thirsty. And now we are famished too, Lord. Have mercy on us. Forgive us again. Transform us again at this table and for this table. And when we have received, send us from this table as servants of your righteousness. By the power of your Son, our Lord. Amen. My friends, even when our cups 
run dry. God's grace overflows. Even when our plates are empty, God's generosity is abundant. And even when our hearts feel barren, God's love is ever present. Friends, we have been called and claimed by God. And by the abundance of God's grace and in the power of God's love, we have been forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery of sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here far and wide and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
If you are receiving from home today, I invite you to receive your elements, knowing that this is the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. For those who are receiving in person today, in just a moment, I'll invite you to come forward down the center aisle. You will receive the bread and uh, the individual cup, uh, which you may consume, and then head back to your seats by the side aisles. You're also welcome to kneel at the chancel steps if you'd like a time of prayer. Our elements today are wheat crackers as well as gluten-free crackers and individual cups of grape juice. This table does not belong to this congregation or this church. This is the table of the Lord, and everyone is welcome here. I'd like to invite Dina to come forward to help me serve today.
and each other, I believe. Will you please join with me in our prayer after communion? You'll see the responsive words in bold in your bulletin or on your screen if you're worshiping from home. Let us pray. As we have been shown the hospitality of Jesus, may we take on the mantle of hospitality in our own lives, eating and drinking and inviting others to the welcoming table. We have been fed. We have been nourished. We have been transformed. It is with great thanks that we have come to this table. Amen. Um, during our prayer time today, I do want to share with you uh, some prayer requests from these past couple weeks from our church family, our community, and around the world. I wanted to uh, lift up a prayer today for Barbara McBride, who has pneumonia right now. So let us be in prayer for her health and healing, as well as for Pat. God, to your love. We trust this prayer. I also want to raise up a prayer of thanksgiving for Sharon Henry, who was hospitalized with AFib. She's been dealing with severe heart problems for a lot of years, and uh, she received a pacemaker on Friday. She is doing quite well and will be coming home soon. Uh, so she is very grateful that she was able to have that procedure and is looking forward to a healthy life. And so with joyful hearts, we say, thank you, God. I wanted to uh, lift up as well a card from, I've got a couple cards here. <clears throat> I, I have a whole arrangement here. I've got all sorts of things to share. We got a lovely card in the mail a couple weeks ago from um, one of our folks who usually watches the live stream. And I love how we remember when we worship that we're not just worshiping in this room. World Communion Sunday is just one of those reminders that we are worshiping with people all over our community and state and world. And this lovely card comes from one of our online attendees named Kai, and she asks for prayers for a big trip that's coming up, some significant travel, a journey in her life. She asks for prayers for strength and confidence and peace, as well as the safety of her flights and the trip itself. And so we lift Kai and her travels up to the Lord. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. I also raise up all of us who are mourning Terza, her family and her friends, her church community, of whom she was a matriarch for so many decades. I did want to pass on that the family has decided that the best date to celebrate her life is her birthday, which is November 11th. It's a Saturday in November, and we will have the celebration of life and reception here. When I get the details of the time, I will let you know, so be keeping an eye on your newsletter for that. But for all of us who are mourning Terza far and wide, let's remember everyone in grief and sorrow. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. I always struggle to raise up prayers for certain world events, especially when they're so complicated that I can't even tell who the good guys and the bad guys are. And so I want to raise up prayers today for violence in the Middle East and for complicated political scenarios that we know little to nothing about, things that have been happening for generations and for centuries. We pray for peace. We pray for an end to violence. We pray for diplomacy. We pray that God does what God knows is best in everyone's lives. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. 
I did want to raise up to you as well that next week we will be starting our season of All Saints, the time when we put on the walls the pictures of our dearly departed saints. And there are so many who have left us this summer uh, whose lives we have celebrated or will be celebrating soon. So I invite you to, to be in some prayerful reflection this week of whose pictures you would like to bring in to help decorate our walls with the great cloud of witnesses, those saints in heaven who worship with us every time we gather. If you can print off your pictures and bring them in on Sunday, we will add them to the walls, or if you'd like to email them to the church office, we can print those off for you as well. And so uh, please be in prayerful consideration of whose faces you would like to add to the great cloud of witnesses as we celebrate the saints of our lives in the coming weeks. Um, again, I want to raise up a prayer for all who mourn. This was a grief filled summer with us losing many people in our church family and our community who had deep impacts on our lives. So for all of those who mourn, we say, God, to your love, we trust this prayer. I'd invite you uh, into a moment of silent prayer to lift up any names or situations that are on your heart, knowing that the Holy Spirit carries your sighs to God. Let us be in a moment of silence together. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. Will you pray with me our prayers of the people? At this table, we lift our voices in prayer. At this table, we seek your peace. At this table, we know you have drawn near. At this table, we find release. Amen. As we enter into our time of offering, again, I have some wonderful cards to share. We know that when we uh, do the offering, that there are many ways that we give of ourselves through our time, our talents, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And there have been some thank yous that were sit in for ways uh, that we were able to give of ourselves as a church community to be welcoming and helpful to people in our neighborhood in need. One is a, a beautiful card says, thanks a million. And this is from Julie for the AK to DC fundraiser for the students heading to DC. Uh, she writes to the members of the church. We had such a great garage sale in the parking lot. It was an amazing weather day and our AK to DC group did very well. Your activities and support of our community is impressive. I appreciate all that you do. Thanks from Julie for AK to DC. Thank you for your hospitality for that group. Thank you for welcome, uh, welcoming them into this space that is excellent stewardship of our facility. And uh, a wonderful way of supporting our community. We also received a wonderful card from Sprout Family Services. You remember uh, a few weeks ago, Red came from Sprout Family Services and uh, she wrote a card thanking us for being so welcoming to her. She asked uh, me to express the deepest gratitude to the Homer UMC community for welcoming her and Sprout to share the message and to make the plea for support. She says the HUMC community continues to be a supportive a support network for our entire community and uh, she thanks me and you for all of the support that we have given sprout over the years and she ends by saying thank you for advocating for some of the most vulnerable in our community so again thank you for being so welcoming uh, for uh, inviting sprout in and listening to red's message and the support that you give we have an ongoing diaper drive to support sprout so if you want to bring in diapers to donate you're welcome to do that or if you'd like to make a donation so we can do like a mass order um, you are also welcome to support sprout in that way um, you can also see in your bulletin there's the pfd offering envelope we know it's pfd season our general fund could always use some support you can see all the many ways that our general fund supports the missions and ministries of the church. So I invite you to take that home and prayerfully consider if you'd like to make an offering from your PFD this year. 
I have a couple more announcements. Sunday School for Kids is starting next week. Uh, thank you for those who have been patient with the delay. We're sorry some things came up. But next week at 10 o'clock, we will be starting our Sunday School Music Program for Kids right here in the sanctuary. There will be some singing. There will be some learning how to play the chimes. It's going to be a great time for kids to uh, be able to play and learn music and uh, learn some of the songs and stories of our faith. Uh, all kids uh, up to uh, upper elementary school are welcome in that time. And again, that starts at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, the adult fellowship time is for middle schoolers up to adults, anybody who would like to come. This morning, it was coffee and donuts downstairs in the fellowship hall. It's a great time to just talk and chat. If you think pre-pandemic days, what we used to do after church, we're now doing before church. So uh, a little bit of light snacks and coffee and just a time to talk and get to know each other. There is also a Sunday school lesson. If you are one of the shyer type who needs something to talk about, we've got uh, some material down there that you can uh, use to help spur on your conversation. Youth Marimba is starting today. And so if you are interested in the Youth Marimba, please talk to Miss Karen right after church. Marimbas are starting up today and choir will be starting soon as well. So if you are interested in being part of the choir for the Advent and Christmas season, please talk to Marge. We are still solidifying our day of the week that we'll be meeting and uh, hopefully we'll get that done soon so that we can start making a joyful noise. Everyone is welcome to choir. If you are interested in making music, you are welcome to come. I know that our soprano section always needs a little help. Our men's section needs a little help. We have some incredible altos, but they can always use some more too. Uh, so if anyone is interested, you are welcome to come. We have a good time together, uh, and it always is a, a, a beautiful time of uh, joy and worship. Uh, we also have a potluck after church today, and everyone is welcome to come downstairs and extend the table of the Lord to the potluck table as well. I had one more announcement handed to me as we came in. Japanese Club is doing a bake sale fundraiser Monday, October 9th and 23rd from 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. at the West Homer Elementary front entrance. They would appreciate donations of baked goods or cash and check donations are always welcome as well. And uh, they have got some uh, other information on this flyer that we'll post outside the office door so you can see how you can help the Japanese club or please talk to Megumi at the potluck as well and she can give you some more information. And of course... Today is World Communion Sunday, and this is one of our handful of special Sunday offerings that we receive every year. On World Communion Sunday, we partner with other United Methodist congregations all over the world to support young adults going into leadership around the world. Half of the special Sunday offering provides World Communion scholarships for graduate and undergraduate students from the U.S. and around the world, and the remainder provides grants to support training worldwide for inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. We know that the United Methodist Church, the world, our communities are all still recovering from the global trauma of the pandemic, the impact of tumultuous political climates the world round, and the anxiety of denominational disaffiliations. So now, perhaps more than ever, we are called to be part of bringing hope and joy to the world. Through our gifts and support, we help bring Christ's loving presence to the world with our words and actions by supporting young faithful leaders around the world. If you would like to make a special offering to support World Communion Sunday, you can make a note of that on your check. You can write it on your offering envelope, which you'll see in the pew in front of you, World Communion Sunday, or you're welcome to visit our website. You see that in your bulletin. There is a specific line on our website where you can donate to World Communion Sunday directly. If you are worshiping online today, you can see our street and web addresses on there as well. And if you would like to designate your offering for World Communion Sunday, please just make that clear uh, in your offering. And 100% of those proceeds will go to help support scholarships for young leaders around the world. Will you please bow with me as we offer ourselves and our gifts to God? 
Holy God, we ask that you bless these offerings and transform them into leadership opportunities and educational scholarships, new ministries that will equip and restore your people. May Holy Communion be experienced by all as we join our gifts with siblings around the world. We thank you for all that you have given to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for our doxology. And you can tell I've been out of town a couple weeks. I forgot to mention there's an offering box in the back if you want to make an offering today. Just so you know. Will you please stand for our doxology? Be present at our table, Lord. song today is in the black hymnal number 2184 sent out in Jesus name now uh, many of you know how I like to do this we're gonna sing it through once at a moderate pace and then Ola's gonna pick it up as we sing it through a second time and then the third time through Ola is going to play it as fast as her carpal tunnel allows <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to try to keep up. So 2184 sent out in Jesus name. <laughs> Thank you, Ola. That was beautiful. As we go forth today, I invite you to receive this benediction called, And the Table Will Be Wide. This is a blessing for World Communion Sunday by Jan Richardson of the Painted Prayer Book. And the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, and the arms will be open wide to gather us in. 
and our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough, and we will come unhindered and free, and our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame, and we will turn toward each other without fear, and we will give up our appetite for despair, and we will taste and know delight, and we will become bread for a hungering world, and we will become drink for those who thirst, and the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere, there will be a feast. Amen.